Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today is a very exciting day and not one that I thought would be happening anytime soon. For the longest time, I've wanted to build a K2SO droid. If you've never seen K2, he's massive, like over seven feet tall, massive. He is literally one of the largest droids that you could consider building. And of course it means the pieces to build him are quite large as well. So when Anycubic reached out to me asking if there was anything big I'd be interested in building on their Cobra 2 Max printer, K2 was the first thing that came to mind. Here's the printer. Clearly this thing is gloriously massive. It has a build volume of 420 by 420 by 500 millimeters, which makes it the biggest 3D printer that I've ever owned. It can also reach speeds of 500 millimeters a second, which means I'm gonna be able to pull off some really big droid parts really quickly. So I guess with all that being said, let's actually start building K2SO. <laughs> I will of course be using the Droid Division files for K2, which will be linked in the description box. And I decided to start this build from the feet up. I figured that would probably be the easiest way to keep track of all of the pieces. The foot I did print quite hefty. I think I used like 35% infill, seven walls. I wanted the legs to have way more weight than I might typically put in a build because K2 is incredibly top heavy. So I wanted to see if I could almost counterbalance him by putting more weight in his leg pieces. But printing the feet super strong in general is never a bad idea. It has to be able to support the entire weight of the droid. And for all of these pieces, I was using the Anycubic High Speed PLA in black, which they also very kindly sent to me. And I must say this stuff printed beautifully. I was super impressed. It's actually been quite a while since I've printed with PLA. I've been doing a lot of ABS lately. And just in general, this was a brand new filament to me. And these pieces looked gorgeous. The layer lines are almost not visible for how this stuff ends up printing. I also really didn't mess around too much with the slicer settings, especially for these first leg pieces as I was still trying to get used to the printer. Also, all of this footage isn't sped up at all or anything. This is the speed that everything was printing at. And since this printer does move so quickly, it wasn't long before I had all of the pieces for the first leg. There was pretty minimal support on these leg pieces. Mostly it was just this support fin on the lower shin piece. Everything else pretty much didn't need support material, so didn't have much cleanup to do, which was great because I really wanted to test fit these pieces together to see what they looked like. I did put a metal curtain rod through the legs. They do require a one inch pole of some type. And from there, you're basically just sliding leg parts onto the pole. And this leg was absolutely ginormous. I know I keep on looking short in these videos, but I'm like 5'10". <laughs> I stood it up in front of IG just so you could see the sheer size comparison between the two. After that, I did end up printing the left leg as well, but they're literally just the mirrored pieces of the right leg. And I realized that the two legs were not gonna be able to stand up well on their own without the hip pieces. So that's what I went ahead and printed next. These got printed extra strong as well, since they are such load bearing pieces. To go along with that, I ended up printing the front and back panels for the hips, as well as these piston ring pieces. These are incredibly complex pieces. I did end up using organic supports because I figured that would be about the only way that they would actually print and they printed beautifully. But back to the main hip pieces, I realized I was going to have to sort of break my tradition and put these pieces together if I wanted to be able to actually test build this droid. So started off with removing the support material, which removed so easily. I did sand the poles that go into the thigh pieces just so that they more easily slid in and out since I really do not want them to get stuck. Next, I super glued in the dowels onto the one side. And then I, of course, pulled out my handy dandy plastic weld, which I don't actually think I've ever mentioned. This stuff actually comes in different set times. I typically end up using the five minute one because I need things to set really quickly. Originally, I thought it only came in different colors, but the different colors are actually different reaction times for the epoxy itself. And with this stuff, I still go around the outside edge with super glue so that the pieces adhere even faster than the possible five minute timing. So far everything has been printing wonderfully, like so impressed with how clean these pieces are turning out, but I did just want to mention something that I sort of accidentally discovered and it sort of pertains to, I do get a lot of questions asking like how on earth I end up printing massive projects like this so fast and most of the time it does come down to time management, like 
really planning what pieces you're printing when. So for instance, if something's going to take four hours, then I will probably print it in the daytime. But if I have a piece that I want to print sort of in the group of pieces that I'm working on at the moment, so say the leg, for example, um, like the knee might be like a four hour print and the upper thigh might be like a 12 hour print. So I would make sure to save the 12 hour print and start that as late as I possibly can in the day so that I it can be printing overnight and working on its own without issue and then it's basically can be printing like 24 hours a day. And to sort of partner with that, it is the idea of knowing when your prints are actually finished so that you can basically waste no time in between prints, grab the ones that are finished off and start the next print job immediately. And so I sort of accidentally connected this printer to the app. I mean, I did want to look at what the app for these Cobra 2 printers sort of looked like and what it could do. And so got that all set up. I wasn't super interested in printing from the cloud because I have, you know, my printer profiles and everything on my computer. The USB stick works fine for me right now. But what started happening is because this printer is connected to the app on my phone, it actually notifies you when the print job is completed, which is so handy when you're trying to have the printer running 24 seven, super efficiently, not wasting time. And of course, part of that is it also says how long everything takes. So if I need to reference anything in this video, then I have all of that information on here already in case like I accidentally forget to record the screen or something, or somebody has a question about how long something took and I just can't remember because I have have to print like 80 pieces for this droid. So I just wanted to mention that because that's a feature that I didn't even consider and is being very, very handy for this project. Next, it was on to the torso pieces. And these are by far the largest pieces in this entire project. In fact, this main torso section will end up being the largest 3D print I've ever done. I started with the smallest of the three pieces, which is the belly piece, which feels ridiculous to say because this piece on its own is very large, but it only gets crazier from here. I skipped the main torso piece and jumped to the upper torso piece because I could just not handle the thought of a two and a half day print yet. And this upper torso piece was the only one that I had any issue with. It ended up freezing 97% completed. It looked beautiful up until that point. So I just printed myself off the remaining sliver that it needed. And then it was on to the biggest piece of them all, the main torso section. This could have got printed in four separate sections, but it fit perfectly on this printer. So why not go for the full thing, see how it goes, experience the never ending anxiety of printing a piece this large and the possibility of it failing. But as you can see, it did in fact print successfully. I figured sitting down with this piece would probably be about the only way that I would be able to adequately convey just how large this single piece is. I believe this is about like a two and a half kilograms of filament, maybe closer to two and a quarter once you get the supports off of it. But this piece is huge. It is very clearly the single largest piece that I have ever attempted to 3D print. And it looks excellent. I am so impressed with how this piece looks, especially considering when this started to get further and further completed and it started to get really heavy. It was shaking this table quite a lot, which is to be expected. Obviously the printer compensates for any extra vibrations that it might be creating, but you know, having your furniture shake so much is a little concerning. So even though I did pre-plan and take into account that at some point the printer was gonna be slinging around like two kilograms worth of something on the bed, I did forget to slow down the travel movements. So it was flinging it around quite a lot still. And I did notice it lifted, I think the back corner ever so slightly, like nothing that's going to be a problem when I go to actually put this together, I would say, but it does mean that had it been going faster, it might have actually flung itself off of the bed. I don't know. The bed holds prints very, very well. So I'm not sure if that would really be a thing. And this does have quite a lot of surface area, but other than just trying to minimize the just shaking of whatever you possibly have the printer on when printing absolutely massive pieces like this, there is the possibility that depending on how much of the piece is actually adhered to the bed, it could almost fling itself off of the bed 
just due to how fast this machine can go and how big and heavy the pieces that you're looking at printing might be. So it is something to keep in mind. This one turned out really, really great and I really did not slow it down that much. But yes, now that this torso section is all printed, it's time to move on to the arms. There were a couple of pieces first that were technically more torso related than arm, like these shoulder rings that are just shockingly large. They printed really beautifully though, especially since they have all of this paneling detail. It looks super cool. There's also this outer shoulder plate, which this thing might be the cleanest 3D print I've ever seen. And while I had other arm pieces printing, I decided to go ahead and assemble the two halves of the torso because I realized again that I was going to need these to be in one piece in order to properly test build K2. As a bit of an extra assembly measure, I decided to actually use my plastic welder and put some of these staples into the torso. There were a few gaps that I was a bit paranoid about and this is by far the heaviest piece, so didn't want to take any chances. And this thing's also super fun to use. You just pull the trigger to heat up the staple, press it into the plastic, let it sit for a minute to cool down, and then pull the plastic welder out. I only put these on the inside, so it's not even like it's going to be more difficult to finish later. But then it was back to finishing the print jobs for the final few arm pieces. And once they were all printed, it was time to start assembling the arms. There were only a couple of pieces that I actually needed to glue together. Most of the arm is assembled using bolts since it needs so much articulation. I ended up printing the fingers in resin. Mostly this is to make my life way easier down the road when I need to go post-process all of these pieces. The fingers are attached to the hand using a bolt, but the thumb just slides into the thumb socket. And then all of the different joint pieces also are just held together using a bolt. Next it was into the forearm section. The wrist goes into the forearm using a pin. I just use this really thick wire for all of the joints like this and this is to allow the wrists to have a range of motion still. Next it was on to attaching the shoulder joints to the bicep pieces and then the two separate halves of the arm together. And since the arms were all done we could go back to looking at assembling even more of this droid. There were a few pieces that I just held on to the torso using some blue tack. I just didn't want to risk them falling off when I was manipulating everything still. Then there were these panel pieces that I also put on to the torso using the blue tack. The shoulder joints also have one of these metal poles running through them for stability. So I slid those onto the upper torso before trying to put this entire thing onto the legs. Now this had to be done in a very particular way because ceiling height. <laughs> but honestly, this went together way easier than I expected. The main challenge is just the sheer weight of these pieces since they are so large. The last little detail step was sliding these shoulder armor pieces on. And that of course leaves the head pieces as the last ones needing to to be printed. These again were some pieces that had to go onto this droid in a very particular order because K2 stands at about 7 foot 1 inches and my ceiling height is 7 foot 2, so it uh, doesn't get much tighter than that. And here is K2SO all put together. He took me just under three weeks to print, which is pretty incredible considering just the sheer size of him and that he was done completely on the one printer. He'll be staying like this for the next few months until the weather gets a bit warmer and it'll be easier to finish him and work on him outside. Side. A massive thank you again to Anycubic for making this project possible, but that is everything, so thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video.